In lesson 6.2, you will apply properties of rational exponents. Okay, so using those properties, when we're multiplying like bases, remember we add our exponents. So it'll be 6 to the 1 half plus 1 third power. And now to add those fractions, we need a common denominator of 6. So I can write 1 half as 3 6, and I can write 1 third as 2 6. So altogether, we have 6 to the 5 6 power. Now we usually change those fractional or rational exponents to roots. So I'd write this as the sixth root of 5 factors of 6. Okay, and that doesn't simplify because there's not 6 factors alike underneath that radical. There would be 5 factors of 2 and 5 factors of 3. Okay, in a problem 2, we have a product raised to a power. So remember, we would raise every factor inside that product to that power outside. And that would create double powers, which we multiply. So I'd have 27 to the 2 thirds power times 6 to the 2 fourths power, or 1 half power, simplifying. Well, 27 to the 2 thirds power is the cube root of 27 squared. And 6 to the 1 half power is just the square root of 1 factor of 6. Okay, simplifying, I can take the cube root of 27, that's 3, and 3 squared is 9. So I get 9 square roots of 6. The square root of 6 doesn't simplify further. Okay, in our third example, we have a negative exponent, which we'd want to get rid of by moving that product to the denominator of a fraction and raising it to a positive one-third power. And then get rid of parentheses again by raising every factor inside parentheses to that power outside. So I have 4 cubed raised to the one-third power times 2 cubed raised to the one-third power and double powers we multiply. So we're going to have 1 over 4 to the 3 thirds, which is 1, times 2 to the 3 thirds, which is 2, and that's going to simplify to 1 eighth. Okay. In problem 4, we have 6 to the first power over 6 to the 3 fourths power. Remember dividing like bases. We subtract exponents. And since 1 can be written as 4 fourths, we have 6 to the 4 fourths take away 3 fourths, which is 1 fourth power. And writing that as a root, that's the fourth root of 1 factor of 6. And that doesn't simplify because there's not 4 factors alike in 6. Okay, in the next problem, we've got a fraction, uh, a numerator raised to the 1 fourth power and a denominator raised to the 1 fourth power. Since that power is the same, I could write that as 56 over 7 raised to the 1 fourth power using our properties of exponents. And that's raised to the 5th power. So simplifying 56 divided by 7, I would get 8. And multiplying double powers, I have 8 to the 5 fourths power. Now I can simplify because I'm taking the fourth root of 8 to the 5th power. And how many factors of 2 are in 8 to the 5th power? I can write that, I can write 8 as 2 cubed raised to the 5th power. And that's double powers underneath that radical. So I can write that as 2 to the 15th power. Now remember, for every 4 factors of 2, 1 will come out. So I can write 2 to the 15th power as 2 to the 4th power times 2 to the 4th power times 2 to the 4th power. That's 12 factors of 2, and I have 3 more. That's a total of 15 factors of 2. 
So I can take the fourth root of four factors of two and get two. And I can do that two more times, so that's a total of three factors of two that come out of that radical times <clears throat> the fourth root of three factors of two, which is eight. So just multiplying uh, out front, two to the third power is eight times the fourth root of eight. Okay, here are some more examples. In this first one, we're multiplying like radicals, cube roots. Because of our product property of radicals, I can put those radicands underneath the same cube root, and I can write 25 as 5 times 5 times that third factor of 5. So I'm taking the cube root of three factors of 5, which means 1 will come out. The cube root of 125 is 5. Okay, in problem 2, I want to use the quotient property of radicals. I have the same root top and bottom. So if I take the cube root of that fraction, 32 fourths, I'll be able to simplify because 32 divided by 4 is just 8 and the cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 times itself 3 times gives us 8. Okay, let's simplify the fourth root of 64. We're looking for four factors alike in 64. But if you factor 64, you'll find that it's made up of six factors of two. And for every four factors of two, one will come out of this radical. So I'll split up those factors of two, and I'll take the fourth root of four factors of two and get two, and that'll leave the fourth root of two factors of two, and two squared is four. Okay, here, I can't simplify that fraction underneath this fourth root, so I'll take the fourth root of the numerator over the fourth root of the denominator. And I need to rationalize this denominator. I know that there's three factors of two in that radical in the denominator, but I need four factors alike in order to take one out. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by the fourth root of one factor of two over itself, a form of one, and then that way I'll have four factors of two underneath that radical in the denominator. So I'm going to have the fourth root of seven times two, or fourteen on the top, which doesn't simplify, and in the denominator I'm going to have the fourth root of four factors of two, so that now I can take the fourth root of those four factors of two and just get two. So the denominator is rationalized. Okay, in problem five, I have like terms. I have five four to the three-fourths power minus three four to the three-fourths power. So that's altogether two four to the three-fourths power. And now if I change that fractional exponent to a root, I'm taking the fourth root of four to the third power. But that's how many factors of two again underneath that radical. I've got the fourth root of four, which I can write as two squared, raised to the third power. I have double powers, so I can multiply and get two to the sixth power, whoops, that's going to be a big power there, two to the sixth power, and for every four factors of two underneath that radical, one will come out. So I'll factor those six factors of two again into two to the fourth power times two squared. And I'll take the fourth root of those four factors of two, get two, so that I can multiply two times two out front, I'll have four out front, and I'm left with the fourth root of two squared, which is also four. Okay, in these examples, the first example, we're subtracting radicals. Now the only way I can subtract and simplify is if they're like radicals. So what I want to do is make sure that both terms are simplified. 
that cube root of 81, I can write 81 since it's 9 times 9 and each 9 is 2 factors of 3. I can write 81 as 3 to the 4th power. And I can't simplify the cube root of 1 factor of 3. But I can take the cube root of 3 factors of 3 underneath that first radical and get 3 and I'm left with the cube root of that fourth factor of 3. So these are like radicals. They're the cube root of 3 radicals and I can simplify. 3 cube roots of 3 take away 1 cube root of 3 is going to leave 2 cube roots of 3. Okay, let's simplify in problem 2 here. We're taking the cube root of 27z squared. For every three factors alike, one will come out. So I can write 27 as 3 cubed. I can write z to the ninth as z cubed times z cubed times z cubed. That's nine factors of z. For every three factors alike, one will come out. So the cube root of three factors of three is three. The cube root of three factors of z is z. And I'm going to do that two more times for a total of 3. So my final answer is 3z to the third power. Okay, um, and now I can simplify this product raised to the 1 half power uh, a number of ways, but what if I take the square root of that product, 16g to the fourth power h squared, and I know for every two factors alike, one will come out. So I'll think of that 16 as 4 squared. I'll think of g to the fourth as g squared times g squared, and I have h squared. So taking the fourth, uh, the square root of two factors of 4, one will come out. The square root of two factors of g, one will come out, but I'll do that twice, so I'll have g squared, and the square root of two factors of h will be h. So there's my simplified product. Okay, in problem four, I can take the fifth root of that numerator over the fifth root of that denominator, and I can write y to the tenth as y to the fifth times y to the fifth. And that way I can see that for every five factors alike underneath this fifth root, one is going to come out. So I'm going to have x in the numerator. I'm going to take the fifth root of y to the fifth once. I'm going to take it twice. So in simplest form, I get x over y squared. Okay, one problem left here. And we're dividing. I know that I can cancel a factor of 6 top and bottom. That's going to leave 3 in the numerator. And I also know that when I'm dividing like bases, I want to subtract exponents. So I have r to the 1 minus 1 fourth power. And I have s to the 2 thirds power in the top. And I still have uh, t to the negative third power in the denominator. Okay, so in the top I have 3 and 4 fourths take away 1 fourth is 3 fourths. So I have r to the 3 fourths power. I have s to the 2 thirds power and I have t, I'll raise t to the numerator and make that exponent positive, t to the third power. So now if I want to get rid of my uh, fractional exponents, I can write this as 3t cubed times the fourth root of only three factors of r times the third root of two factors of s. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 2 through 12 even on pages 421 and 423 of your textbook.